This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's up everyone, today we're going to be creating a beginner eye rig like the one I used in this animation here. This is a very basic and easy eye rig to make, however I will be moving quickly and using keyboard shortcuts. And with that being said, let's get started. First things first, let's kill the default cube. After that, we're going to go to add a mesh and we are going to add a UV sphere. Now I'm going to press three on my numpad to go into the side view here. I'm going to right click this and hit shade smooth. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode. Now this is going to be our eyeball. Now I have a texturing tutorial if you wanna look at how to make a pupil for that eye, but we'll be skipping that for this tutorial because we're gonna be focusing on the rigging aspects. So first let's press A to select everything and then we're going to hit shift D to duplicate. I'm gonna to switch to wireframe mode so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna go ahead and scale this up just a bit and that's going to be our eyelids. Now with that still selected, if you hit Control I, what it will do is select the inverse of what you have selected, so it will select our eyeball inside, so we're going to press H to hide that eyeball. Now still in wireframe mode with vertice select mode on, what we're going to do is drag and select these vertex here, and what we're going to do is hit V. Now what that's going to do is split those. So now if I press L to select an object, you will see that it selects one half because we have split it into two halves. So now what we're going to do is press H to hide that upper half. And we can see here, if we switch back to solid view, that we have kind of a gaping hole here. So I'm gonna to switch to edge mode. I'm going to alt click this edge here. And we're gonna press F and that will fill it. And then we're going to hit control B and we're going to drag that just a little bit and I'm gonna roll up on the mouse wheel there to add an edge or two. And that's going to give our eyelid here a lip. Now let's hit Alt H. What that's going to do is unhide everything. So we're going to go back to our side view by pressing 3. We're going to hold L over this eyelid here and we're going to hit Control I and then that will select everything else and we can hit H. And now we are again focusing on just our eyelid here. So still in edge mode I'm going to Alt click here, hit F to fill, hit Control B and I'm going to pull that up to also give this a little edge. Now, if I deselect everything and hit Alt H and deselect everything again and go back into side view, we can see that we have our eyelids here over our eyeball underneath. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to tab back out to object mode. We're going to select our sphere. We're going to come over here to the object data properties tab. We're going to click new to create a basis shape key. And then we're going to click the plus sign again. I'm going to call this default one closed, and then I'm going to call this one open. Now what we're going to do with open select, we're going to tab it into edit mode here, and then we're going to grab this upper eyelid by pressing L, and you wanna make sure you have just that eyelid selected. We're gonna come up here next to global, and we're gonna change this so that we rotate around the 3D cursor. Now, if you started with the default scene and you created everything as I have, you should be selected right here in the center so that when we rotate, we will rotate that eyeball around. So what I'm going to do is hit R90, and that will rotate the eyelid back to the back there. I'm going to press A to deselect everything. I'm going to press L, make sure that I have this eyelid selected, and then I'm going to hit R-90. negative so I'm just typing those in on my keypad and that's allowing me to kind of do those increments. There's many ways you can do that. You can also use the gizmo over here or if you have this tab open, you can actually use the rotation and stuff over here. So with that, what I'm going to do is now press S and that will bring up my scale tool. I'm gonna to scale that in just a tiny bit and that's just so that when we switch out the solid view here, we don't have any Z fighting, which is where you get those kind of glitches when two things are trying to fight for the same space. Now. I'm going to tie back out into object mode here. And then if we turn our value up to one, we'll see that we go from a closed eye to an open eye. Now you notice that the transition there is kind of rough there because it's just doing the quickest path from A to B that it can. So I'm going to show you a quick little animation trick I use. And that is just one of the limitations of this rig since we're not doing a complex eyelid rig. So what I'm going to do is come up here to the dope sheet and just theoretically show you an animation here. So I'll click to insert a little keyframe there. Then I'll insert a keyframe here and that will 
make it open, and I'm just gonna set this to about 25 frames. And now when I hit play, we can see that it doesn't look good, but if I select all of my keyframes there for that value open, and I press T, this will bring up this interpolation, and if I hit constant, then what it'll do is it'll only snap when that pauses there. So that way we kind of get rid of the transition, and eye blinks are usually so fast, especially in cartoons and things, that this will work fine for all the transitions. I'm gonna go ahead, close this. I'm going to delete these keyframes. Now I'm going to stop there for the sake of time, but if you want, you can add more here. So let me just kind of show you how you would go about doing that. So here I am in the front view, and let's say that we tab into the closed mode here, and we create a new keyframe, or a new shape key, I should say. And then I call this one angry, for example and we tab into edit mode, and if I was just going to hide this one for now and take this one, I could actually rotate this from the front view and kind of create angry eyes and then just make that other eyelid kind of disappear in the back like we did before. So that's kind of how you could go about going through and creating different emotions over here. Like I said, I'll just leave that to you for the sake of time in this tutorial. So now let's go about how we'll actually rig our eye. So to make it a little bit easier to tell where our eye is pointing, I'm gonna come up here into the overlay and I'm going to turn on wireframe. And that'll just make it a bit easier since we don't have a pupil in this example to see where the eye is pointing. So here I am in the side view and I'm going to create an armature. So I'm going to go to shift A and I'm going to go down to armature and that's going to create a bone there. So I'm going to switch over to wireframe mode so I can see what I'm doing. With that bone selected, I'm going to tab into edit mode, I'm going to grab that bone, I'm going to hit R negative 90, type that in on the keyboard, hit enter, and that will rotate that down 90 degrees. Now, if you've been following along, your origin point should be directly here at the center, and that's where it's created the armature on the cursor. So now the center point here of our bone is directly at the center of the eye, which is very important for how we're going to rig it. So what I'm going to do now is take this bone, I'm going to hit Shift D, and then I'm going to press Y, and bring it forward here on the Y axis, just about there. Now we're going to go ahead and name these bones because that'll make it a bit easier later. So over here on the bone tab, I'm going to call this one I, and then I'm going to call this one I control. You can name these whatever you want. Now we're going to tab back out into object mode. We're going to grab this eyeball here, and then we're going to grab the armature, and we're going to hit control P, and we're going to parent it to the armature with empty groups. Now when we do that, we'll come over here on our object eye here, and we come down here to the object data path, we'll see that now we have two vertex groups there, but they haven't actually been assigned to any of these bones. So now what we're going to do is tab into edit mode, we're gonna hit Alt H, make sure we can see everything, and then we're gonna select everything here, I'm just gonna do that by pressing A, and then I'm going to assign that all to the eye bone there. So now if we come back out, and we grab this bone, and we go into pose mode, if we rotate that, we can see that it's going to move our eye, and if we rotate this, we can see that it's not going to do anything. So let's tab back into edit mode. Let's grab this bone. And just to be safe, we're going to press Alt P. We're going to clear parent so that that bone is independent of itself out there. We're going to go back out into object mode. We're going to switch to our solid view. We'll come here into front view. And now what we're going to do is make this bone here so that the eye points at it. So like I said, I didn't do the texturing process of this yet. So we'll use kind of this little knob here as our pupil. And so with our armature selected, we're going to go into pose mode and we want to make this bone here point to this bone. So what we're going to do is grab this bone here, make sure it's selected with the blue little outline, come over here to our bone constraint tab. We're going to add a bone constraint and we're going to do a track to constraint. What that's going to do is allow us to make this bone to point at that bone. So we'll grab track to make that bone point to this bone. So we'll grab object armature there and then we'll select eye control. And you'll see that it's going to kind of make the bone move a bit wonky at first. So we're going to set our up to Z and we're going to set our track axis to Y. And now if we grab this, we can see that it is looking wherever this is. Great, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and create our second eye. So we're gonna tab back out into object mode. We're going to grab everything here, make sure that we have both the armature and the eye selected. And in front view here, which I just got to by pressing one on my number pad, I'm going to hit Shift D with everything selected. 
I'm going to move that over on the x-axis. I'm just going to tap x to lock it in there to make sure that those eyes stay in line with one another. Now if I go back out to object mode here, grab my armature here, we can see that now I can control each of these eyes independently with that. If I grab both of these armatures in interpose mode, we can see that I can kind of animate them both at the same time. But we're also going to create a control here that controls where both eyes look. So let's tab back out into object mode, go into front view here. We're going to hit shift A and let's add a circle. So I'm going to go to mesh circle and you'll see that it kind of created it there. So we'll switch over to wireframe so we can see that we're going to hit R90 and then we're going to just rotate that on the X axis and then I'm going to move that over here in between the two eyes and I'm going to scale that down on the Z axis ever so slightly just to give it a little bit of an oval shape. I'm going to go here into the top view and then what I'm going to do is move that on the Y axis to bring it up here about in line with the front of our eye controls here. Now what we're going to do is go back into solid view so we can see things a bit easier and we're going to come into pose mode. We're going to grab this eye here. We're going to add a bone constraint and then we're going to come over here and make this child of. That's the same thing as parenting the bones. We're going to go ahead parent that to this object circle and then we can hit set inverse going to go back onto object mode, come over to this armature, we're going to go to pose mode, we're going to grab this bone, and what we're going to do is make this a child of, and again we're going to select that circle, and then we're going to go ahead and hit set inverse, and that will reset that there for us, and now you can see that that is a child of the circle, so we can go ahead and we can move each of these eyes around independently if we want, or we can grab the circle and move it around that way so that we can move both eyes. And with that, you have a simple little eye rig. Let's take a look at how we could attach these to a character. Now, I really recommend you go check out my texturing tutorial, and that will allow you to kind of texture these eyes and add some character, pupils, iris, or whatever you want. And then I also have several tutorials on how to model your own character. So you could follow along and then maybe create an eye rig with those characters. For now, let's look at how we could give the default cube a set of eyes, though. So if we go ahead, create a cube there, and I'm just going to move that back here. And one kind of thing with this method, when I have the eyes open, the eyelids kind of go back. So if I go ahead, grab this eyelid here and open this eyelid, you can see that they'll kind of disappear there behind the character. So you kind of want the eyes halfway into your character to kind of maximize that. But now you need to make sure that you select everything. So you need to make sure you grab the armature, the circle, this armature, both eyes, and once you've grabbed both of those, you can then grab your object you want to parent to or your armature. If your character has an armature, hit Control P, hit Object, keep transform, and then you can move this around and now you have a default cube with a set of eyes but like I said I have plenty of tutorials if you want to create a more interesting character and with that you have a basic eye rig. I'd love to see what you create so please share on Instagram. Before we hop over to how I made this character let's talk about our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives and lifelong learners where millions come together to improve their skills. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, freelancing, 3D, and more. It's a membership with meaning. You get thousands of classes and most are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule and to fit all skill levels. I personally have a few 3D courses on there. One thing I see a lot of beginners struggle with is color and their artwork. So I highly recommend you check out this class, Color Masterclass Simple Steps to Create Vivid Art to Improve Your Color Schemes. For a limited time, use the link in my description to get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. And with that being said, I love seeing what you create from these tutorials. So please go mix and match this tutorial with my other tutorials or with your own characters and give them a set of eyes. And I'd love to see what you create on Instagram. So please tag me. And as usual, thanks for watching and please subscribe if you want more Blender content.